Mind Gap Podcast. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Mind Gap Podcast. I'm Doug. I'm Justin. And Doug... What'd you think of the Olympics? Man, I had so much fun watching the Olympics. It started at your house. We watched the opening ceremonies. We did. I Okay. I was thinking as I was watching the closing, I'm like, man, I feel like I watched this with someone. 100% forgot that you guys, I couldn't, I couldn't yeah. place when it started. Yes, that's right. We did. Yeah. We started with you. We watched the opening All ceremonies. The we yeah. watched like some random shit, whatever was on. That's right. And had a good time with that, which was fun. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, honestly... I feel like I when the Olympics are on, I pay attention. But this year, like I really like, you know, if I couldn't catch it live, seven o'clock, if I was on my computer doing something, brought it up on a browser. Mm-hmm. I had it on. We were downstairs watching the highlights of stuff, like really getting into it. It was really, really cool. It was really, really fun. I heard a statistic, uh, and I, I don't remember the exact numbers, but it was something like uh, Comcast was programming 7,000 hours of content and 5,000 of those hours were supposed to be on Peacock. So they were they were using this, which to your point, you were able to pull it up and there is so much digital content mm-hmm. put out for this. It was, I feel like it was the first time that they really leaned that hard into yeah. stream it, uh, pull it up on your browser. You don't have to watch it on TV or with yeah. the like Olympics and primetime. Uh, it was a really, from, from a, like a, cable industry standpoint or like the entertainment industry, I found it fascinating how they were kind of changing their model and also using this to their advantage to push people to Peacock. Yeah. It was, and 6,000 like, of those 7,000 hours were at one point dropped because of a terrible connection. Thank you, Xfinity, for being <laughs> terrible at what you are. I love to see the I, commercials are like, Xfinity, we're keeping everyone connected through the Olympics. Official proud sponsor <laughs> of connecting through the Olympics. I'm like, fuck you. And your and your internet, you piece of shit. <laughs> I don't know, man. My internet never drops. It's the weirdest yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Just so everyone knows, there's a bias here because Justin is an employee of a subsidiary of <laughs> a subsidiary of Comcast. I didn't say that. <laughs> I didn't say that. per our handbook. I didn't say that. <laughs> I mean, but if you have a question, you need help. Let me know. I got a number for you. You get you a top notch, move to the front of the line kind of service. You know what I mean? I feel like I watched more of the Olympics moving past this. I feel like I watched more of the Olympics right <laughs> more of the Olympics this year than I than normally do. I always enjoy it, but for mm-hmm. some reason this year felt really fun. Like it like truly I don't know what it was, but I was really I was just really into it. I feel like there was there was a couple other ones. I, I think maybe two thousand and four because I was still in college mm-hmm. and um I think for, oh, that's right. For a hot second, I worked at the rec center and we had the TVs on. <laughs> you were going to say for a hot second, I was in the Olympics. For a hot second, I was considered to be I was, yeah. like a, a I was an alternate, replacement. alternate <laughs> to the shot put team. It was like, you know, kind of like 42 on the ladder, you know, of succession <laughs> to the presidency. You know? Exactly. Like, I was like secretary of education sort of situation yeah, whatever, where it's like, you know. <laughs> whatever secretary of the interior is, that was right. me. Yeah, that was me. <laughs> Um, I remember it was just on because I, God, that's right. I got that. I don't know how I was. I, that's why. Cause my friend Jeff was like assistant manager for the rec center. He's like, I'll get you a job here. I'm like, yay. And I sat at a computer and basically didn't do anything. And I just like the TV was on. I just remember watching yeah. shit load of the Olympics, yeah, which is fun. I feel like I remember the 2008 Olympics. Other than that, it's kind of a blur Rio a little bit, but like, I don't feel like I remember much from the last one at all. Like the 20, 20- yeah, the last one was weird. Cause it was supposed to be 2020. So it got deferred to 21 and it was, yeah. yeah. It was COVID. It was very, so like, it was weird because like the yeah. gymnastics, like didn't have a crowd in the arena and it was just yeah, like, really weird. Compare that to this year where people were fucking, pa- I love the fact that women's gymnastics is one of the cornerstone events that like, Everyone shows up and shows out for it. It was really cool to see. You There's got a couple houses, of things celebrities. Like that. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's like. I mean, it was so cool just like to see like it's gymnastics, swimming, obviously swimming. basketball, yep. big ones. Yep. Um. You know, there was some really you know big big turnouts. Breaking. For that, but yeah. Breaking boy. We talked about this months ago. 
about how breaking was going to be in and uh i don't think we're going to see breaking come back <laughs> you don't think so i think we. it's will. not in the 2028 olympics <clears throat> oh it's not i didn't know oh i didn't know that and for it to be considered a regular event, it has to show up in three consecutive Olympics. <laughs> See, I thought once I did, was not aware of this rule, I was, I was under the assumption that once it was announced and placed in the in in one of the games, it was just kind of there. You know, you can like try shit out, but it has to be in three consecutive Olympics for it to become kind of like a permanent like fixture. Interesting. And so uh, I don't think I don't <laughs> oh, think uh, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I didn't watch a lot of it. Right. I do did think, see some do you think of it. Raygun ruined it for everyone. I mean, I don't know, man. It was it was tough because I think for a lot of people is it, because it's a competition and I don't know how it was judged necessarily. Like Sure, yeah. Like people would there was a DJ and they would just like improvise to random beats and they would do stuff and you know, I, yeah. I just I want to say, "Hey, listen. I'm, l- I'm glad we're trying stuff. Um, but also, it's good to put stuff back." When it doesn't do well, you know, right? Not to say that you can't go out there and break dance. You can totally I, do that. Look, I'm. We'll go on record and say break dancing is tough as shit. It's and awesome. The people who are doing it are 100 percent badasses, mm-hmm. and they are yeah. like they are athletic as shit. They're absolutely not everyone can do that. It is a yeah. skill you work on, you you practice, you perfect, you hone. But I I I had I was wondering. Do people like do the gymnasts, do the swimmers, do the whoever else look at them and go, really? Well, it's what tough you, because like, it's new. Was there you judging? Know? It's in like the uh, Tom Skrull made this joke, but he's like, you know, you can't take a new religion serious because it's not <laughs> old. It has <laughs> to be old. Like you know, if someone's like, that's check out this. Po- it's, yeah. like, that's why people don't take Scientology seriously. They're like, mm-hmm. this thing was invented in like what the fucking sixties or seventies when L. Ron Hubbard didn't want to pay taxes, right? You know. Well, also and, it's. Bonkers, but yeah, and of course it's yeah, bad shit bonkers. Are. But we're, yeah. if you take a closer look at most religion, you're like that's also yeah. bad shit bonkers. That's also if, bad shit bonkers. Yeah. But you're like, but it's old, and we've been doing it for generations. So it's like my parents <laughs> so, taught me this. You know, like yeah, we'd it's have to grandfather yeah. in. Yeah, so it's the same thing where it's like, hey, here's this new thing, brick dancing, and people are like, mm, I don't know, man, gymnastics yeah. been around for a while, and uh, I don't know, it's a pretty uh, pretty storied past with a lot of really incredible moments in history. Yeah. You know, that you can that are part of the foundation of this entire worldwide <coughs> extravaganza. And then there's like, I think something you know? that could have helped it and they may have done this, but I will say they didn't do it to the point where it hit the mainstream because it didn't yeah. cross. You and I consume a lot of media. So I feel like if it crosses our path, it's safe to say it's hit the mainstream. You know, yeah. if you and I don't see it, then I'm like, that really wasn't promoted well because we we consume we a lot everything. of news and media and whatever. I did not see any push to explain breakdancing. Like explain like are there skill like in gymnastics there's different skills and each skill is weighted a different way and then you have a difficulty score and you have a execution score. Like I, I'm assuming that's the same in breakdancing, but I don't know I'm assuming most people was not were not aware of what the fuck they were watching. I'm willing to bet if you watched it they would explain at the top, it. Right. They would have explained like, so this is how this works. I I guarantee you they did. But um, social media blasted out. Like start doing like the on the Instagram, TikTok, yeah. like how you could put easily put a quick, you know, sizzly reel together of like, you know, want to know more about how breakdancing is going to work? Check this out. You know, yeah. two players enter the ring and blah, 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 blah. And yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, the thing that did make the rounds with the was the Australian woman. Who's doing the break dancing and that unfortunately came across my social media and yeah. uh, was shared by Seth. And then, you know, I was at a, a gathering of uh, other parents on uh, Saturday night and uh, they, someone goes, let's put breaking on. And I go, hey, have you all seen the go? Oh, yeah. And everyone pulled out their phones and like shared like the thing. If you haven't they're, seen it, their this Australian means. woman, like God bless her. She's trying. But it is. She is. Uh, and apparently it's, has a PhD in breakdancing. It's tough. It's tough because it 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 looks like it, it looks like a white person trying to dance is what it looks like. And it's just it's disjointed. It's not really super fluid. It, there's weird motions. There's like hopping with your hands out like a T-Rex or a kangaroo. And uh, it just it looks weird. And um, 
it was unfortunate that that was the highlight as far as I'm concerned of like breaking, uh, you know, it's the moment that went viral instead of yeah. some of the other ones, whoever won. I, don't, I couldn't tell you who won the gold. That didn't go viral. I know for the woman, it was a woman. It was a Japanese person for the men. I don't remember. I don't okay, know. I don't know. It's unfortunate. But there's a lot of events like that, like, like sharp shooting, sharp shooting, sharp shooting. Right. Like there's the um, there's skeet. There was also like one handed with like a blindfold on and some woman was dressed up like a cyberpunk person and she was just like, you know, <laughs> is this with the pistol? Yeah, with like a pistol. Really? Yeah. It was wild. It was very, very That's wild. Like amazing. There's a bunch of stuff. I mean, fucking fencing was out there. You know I, mean? I don't know what that is, but I want to yeah. watch the one handed, the John Wick. Event. Right. Yeah. They yeah. got this. Uh, yeah. They're like. Bam! It was very interesting. You had fencing, you know, like there's just a bunch of yeah, things yeah. that typically don't make the prime time. Yeah. Unless some from America is doing well in it. And even then, or, like you shot put. The fucking <coughs> shot putter won another right. gold medal. They're like, and there he goes. There's his win, and he won. And I'm like, ah, right. oh, come on. Show me. Show me more. I want to see sure. more of this. You know, it's like, ah, oh, it's, it's bullshit. It's either, yeah. Or on this side of the pond, it's either if an American wins it or if, or worldwide, if it goes, if there's a viral moment such right. as this, exactly. with, you know, or if they're swimming in the poopy river, you know, right. there's that, those kind of things tend to, to bubble up. No yeah. pun intended. And the thing what's great is with the Olympics is there's just so many great, beautiful moments that just, it's guaranteed to happen where someone does something triumphant or like, yeah. It succeeds in a way where you're like, holy shit, like Jill and, you know, I was, I caught the end of the men's and women's like gold medal matches for basketball, which were okay, both yeah. fantastic games. Like, I don't know if you caught Steph any Curry of that. Steph Curry saved them. Dude, Steph Curry saved just him. was like, boom, boom, three point, three point, three point, shut them down. Dude. I was like, okay, well, let's Curry, go. I don't know that if they would have had it, honestly. I was like, let's go. And then with the women, oh my God. The women that, that, we were we were in the car going somewhere, so we I started streaming it on my phone. Yeah, on the Peacock app, um, I was streaming it and had it playing through. So we were listening to the stream as radio. So I wasn't able to follow it as well, but dude, I, I'm a, Jill, I'm told it Jill was a loves murder. the WNBA. Yeah, she got she's like this game's at eight thirty in the morning. I'll be up. She goes, I'm I need up, you to yeah. take Nally to a play date at ten because the game won't be over. I'm like, I got you. Got and you, I came boo. back and I watched the last bit of it, and I was like, this yeah. is fucking wild. It came down to, if you didn't hear about it, uh, the U.S. won by one point. And the only reason why it, it stopped was the final shot from France was made. But she was like a fucking inch oh, over the three-point line. So instead yes. of being a three-point to tie it, it was two points. And that was the right. game. I, everyone was like, oh, God, did she... We have to review this. Did she get what? fouled? Like, there's like all right, these things. Let's go to and the it was, tape? <laughs> It was t- it was tough. I felt bad for her because she 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 got she was like yes, and then she immediately goes, oh, it was it was two, and it was like yeah. No one had the average win. I think like point average spread for for women is t- like twenty three points. Okay. So this was unheard of for this to come down to the wire. Not to mention right. it was like U.S. men and women versus like French France in both of those games, and yeah. they both. Oh, won. I love the fact that it was the same matchup, which is awesome. Exactly, and the women have won every sing- a gold medal every single Olympics. Like that, that's incredible. that women's basketball has been in. So they've won sixty one consecutive games that's in the Olympics, which is yeah. fucking insane. But did you? I don't know. The, the one that I, I really started to, towards the end, I, I, I started to really dig the track and field, specifically Dude, the running. yeah. But to, the main one was uh, the women's uh, 4x400 relay. <sighs> Get the fuck Jesus out of here. Christ. The, I was like that one, the I, I don't remember which, I think she was the... I think she was the anchor, but she I was like, she's she pulled a Ledecky where basically the camera had to keep panning out because she had such a lead. And I was like, oh, my God, she almost has a full length of the track and no one's behind her. And they finally pulled out wide enough to where you could see it. And I was like, this is insane. It's so cool. Um, There was also uh, uh, the 400 meter hurdles for women. Sydney McLaughlin uh, Lavrone. Holy was shit. She- from France? No. No, she's from Which, America, USA, and the, she was the four hundred hurdles. Four hundred meter saw, hurdles. I don't. Dude, I didn't see that one. She just fucking. Una- she destroyed the world record, her own world record, mind oh, you. Oh, her. Oh, she's my god. She had fucking rocket boosters on her shoes. Yeah, she is. De- she now, is I didn't beaten- see this one, but I've seen her run in other ones, and holy shit, dude. Dude, she yeah has beaten her own world record six times. <laughs> 
So in like That's the top insane. 10 best times of all time, she's yeah. in six of those times. <laughs> she's in six and of those times. And she is destroyed. And she just annihilated everybody. Right. It was so much fun to watch. And I she mean, makes she, it, not only that, she beat not the, only that, the they're silver like, medalist by a full fucking yeah, a, full, a lifetime a, over over a full second. Like, it's, yeah, it's wild. It, it was one of those things where they kind of zoom out at the end too, where they're like, yeah. "She's so far ahead of everybody." But they sh- also showed like they watched the women's four hundred meter dash. <coughs> she would have placed eighth in the open four hundred without trophies. <coughs> That's how fast she was going. Like they tracked it. They're like, "She oh is so God. fast. She would have placed eighth in the four hundred meter." It's, it's like so. Remove those hurdles. This woman would smoke y'all. Like she is like. Oh my She's god. She's going. That's you know what I mean? Fucking amazing, dude. So That's good. That's amazing. The women's four by yeah. one. Holy shit. That was oh, so cool. That, like, yeah. The four by great. one is such a quick race. Yeah. Oh it all comes god. down to handoffs, and it was so yeah. exciting to watch. It was just like, I don't know, man. I just I had I was just like filled with joy. It was such a breath of fresh air yeah. to watch this and just see people competing and trying their hardest and doing whatever they could do it. I was like, God, this is, we need this. We yeah. need this more than every four years, but every I'll, four years does make it special. It does make it special. I, I will say like when it, when I'm watching the closing ceremonies, this was the first time that I had that pang of like, huh? I know. Oh, I, I miss it. Like I want, I, I don't want to wait till 2028. I want to watch more now, you know? And, yeah, I but know. Did you see the, the, the kickoff, the handoff to, to I LA? heard about it. I didn't see it, it was but pretty I was like, badass. Tom yeah. Cruise doing mission impossible well, I mean, shit. And that was, you know. that was cool. But the concert they had afterwards uh-huh. with the chili peppers, oh. Snoop Dogg and Dre, Billy Eilish and Phineas. Like I heard about it was, Snoop Dogg. And not only that, can we take a, a cool moment? Lineup. Who would have thought Snoop Dogg would be the best fucking U.S. ambassador? I mean, Dude, Jesus Christ, this guy, so like a few things on him. One, I, he he absolutely has mastered the art of time travel or of, of 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 phasing. I don't know. He I don't know how he got around that fucking quick in Paris. He was at every single event. He was just there inexplicably. And, and then like, his and Snoop Dogg's here, and he was just there. I'm like, and, God damn! And, like, and he was there with some article of clothing that had an athlete's f- yes. a full portrait on right fucking thing i'm like what kind of wardrobe does he travel with and where did he get all these and now that he's hanging out with like some of the best athletes parents like cheering him on he's like let's go i'm like what the fuck snoop's there he was a ray of goddamn light in that so i am so happy that's the guy he just also seemed like he was just genuinely happy to be there like yeah man i mean it was so good i was like this guy what an ambassador. And, and Flavor Flav sponsoring the <laughs> yes. water polo team. What what so an cool. out of left field. That's so cool. Yeah. So cool. I'm like, God damn, man. Like, this is just, I don't know. Like, it, all, all in all, it was a really great, great really yeah. great couple weeks. I'm really glad. I'm sad it's over. And I fucking look forward to the next the next yeah. Olympics, man. Now, Although it you, is in LA. We'll see if, you know, we'll see how that goes. Because the, the, the dark this, side this is. the third time they've done that, though. They're ready. And only that. Like, it's like the dark side of it is, you know, fucking homeless people are going to get, you know, brushed away into some dark Booted, corner. They're going to get booted out. They're yeah. going to get booted. It's like Olympics is never yeah. good for communities. It never no. is. It's never a good thing. <laughs> and but you know. L.A. Look, L.A. has done it and survived multiple times before. Yeah. So we'll we'll see what happens. Yeah. The only thing I will say is I'm glad that they're you want to. Well, I do you want to spread it around because it it. Tends to have ruin, you know, leave leave a, a, a waste trail wherever it goes, just yeah. like the Sen. Um, yeah. But uh, at least they're reusing structures that, like, this is the third time these will be have been used again. Now, they're used in, intermittently in between the Olympics, mm-hmm. but I'm glad they're at least not like <laughs> what some city doesn't have to completely from the ground up build an entire, yeah. you know, Olympic whatever. Well, I've heard that there's a there's a pitch that moving forward, there's only going to be a certain number of cities that are going to be allowed to host it. See, for the sake of like being like, you have the facilities, right? They are here, right. as opposed to going to some random place where it's like you got to build all this shit, right? And then it's going to go to waste. You're not going to, you know, you're not going to use it or whatever. Like it's it's just not. I'm worth not going to lie to you. So I'm not opposed to that. The idea that there's like you got eight, you got eight locations, right? And you rotate through all of them, like yeah. Well, dude, bad, if it happens every four thing. years. I mean, so. that's that spreads it out, yeah. Absolutely. Now, are you a Winter Olympics fan? You get it every 32 years, you know? Uh, I used to. I used to be when I was younger. For There was a period where I was like, I love the luge. You know, like for whatever reason, like I was super into that one. Or in the bobsledding, for whatever reason, I was like, this is so cool. Yeah. And I've kind of lost. I've kind of been like, eh, I don't want to yeah. celebrate the winter. You know, it doesn't need <laughs> I, any that's more That's exactly it. I fucked the is. winter. Yeah. 
I yeah. I, I definitely like, think yeah, the uh, I definitely think the uh, the summer the summer just holds something special. I don't know what it is, but there's something super special about the summer Olympics. So much variety. It's like you know, it's like we got downhill skilling, skiing. We've got like the big one with the jump. And you try to land as far right. as you can. You've got, you know, there's speed skating. There's figure skating. There's the luge. There's the bobsled. There's the whole, right. like, cross country, the biathlon, cross country skiing, and then rifling. Two random things that are <laughs> mashed together. <laughs> You're know, like, what? I don't know. There's just, I don't know. There's just a bunch of things where I'm like, I don't want to watch this. Like, I don't have any interest well, in any of this. You know? 90% of the Fucking the curling, sports, baby! Woo-woo! You know? 90% of the sports are just going down hills. That's yeah. it. In some way, shape, or form. like, they're snowboarding. I'm like, eh, you know, <laughs> I don't care. Uh, Can, uh, what was the, uh, oh, you just said something that reminded me. Oh, I couldn't figure this out. I did a very quick Google search. Couldn't find anything on it. But why in the Olympics do they call it soccer? Fuck if football? I know, dude. That's, that's that fucked up. That has been driving me nuts the entire games because I'm like, we're the it's only like my beef with movies it- that don't take place in the U.S. and they still use like the imperial system of measurement. I saw it again. I watched rewatched the Count of Monte Crisco. Crisco Jesus Christ, Christo. And yeah. uh, they're like talking about calculating how long it would take for them to dig under the under the fortress. And it's like yeah. uh, we could do it, a, you know, a couple inches a day. And I'm like, no, no. How many feet a feet a month? I was like, no, you're fucking French. You're not doing that. You don't use months. You don't. <laughs> You don't know what time is. How dare you? <laughs> yeah, that's fucked up. They called it soccer. I'm like, that's I, yeah. That's I just not I was cool, like, man. no one else calls it soccer except. I us. don't understand why. I just that that I would I couldn't. It was like one of those things in a movie where like it pulls you out. Like it was so hyper focused. Unless on that. maybe like, just for why. us and our broadcasts are like it's soccer, y'all. It's soccer, you know, yeah. and everyone else are like football. You know, <laughs> <laughs> is that how everyone else says it? Football. You know? Football. Yeah. Football. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Well, yeah. let us know what your favorite part of the Olympics were. Uh, and uh, we'd love to hear about it at our YouTube, youtube.com slash mindgap podcast. Uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share us to a friend, let them know that we're pretty cool. We're pretty cool guys. And uh, speaking of, this is a random little side note. Uh, we went to uh, Michigan to hang out at the beach for the day. We went and got some ice cream on our way back. And I was sitting there and I heard this woman just go, I was listening to a podcast and then I couldn't hear the rest of it. And a part of me just for some reason goes, I wonder if she's talking about mind gap. <laughs> and I was like, the other part of me was like, what the fuck are you thinking? Do you think this woman with four yeah. kids is listening to mind gap? Probably not. But I was like, wouldn't that be weird how, if I was just out in the world amazing. one day and someone goes, Hey man, I was listening to this podcast. It's called mind gap. And they start talking about our podcast. I'd be like, Oh God, that'd be weird. Yeah. So that, make that I, happen. Share it with people. <laughs> please, please. That would be so. It would look just for. It would. I would benefit no one but us. It'd be amazing. It'd be yeah. such a cool feeling. It'd be so weird because yeah. I'd also just like pull my hat down a little bit further and just kind of be like, I'm not. It's not me. And I just yeah. walk away. <laughs> the fart sand bore is just like chef's kiss. You know. Yeah. Oh man, so those good. guys are top top notch. Real They're real just, high, highbrow humor. I gotta say, there's nothing like their podcast. There's two white guys talking about pop culture, you know? They're right. just so unique, you know? <laughs> so unique. It's just something that just speaks to my soul. Anyway, uh, hit the links in the description for links to our Discord, for links to our Patreon, and links to our merch at, at Redbubble. Um, share us around. Tell everyone we're, we're okay. Say, hey, these guys, they're okay. We'd appreciate it. We'd appreciate you for doing that. There's one more thing I wanted to share about the Olympics. Yes. I could not stop hearing commentators and and anyone who was was speaking say the word dozen dude it's it's just every time they every time they said it i thought doug think fuck you for putting that in my head and for putting it in the forefront of me like being like there it is again there it is again there it is again yeah fuck them fuck him fuck (laughs) fuck everyone who uses that as a measurement i i i I can't stand it it's it's an irrational rage filled thing that i can't wait to share on some random uh, corporate icebreaker before some meeting where they're like, what's one of your weird uh, pet yeah. peeves? The dozen, and I'm going to tell you why it's dumb. You know, like. <laughs> and everyone's so like. So fucking mm. stupid. And they're like, wow, Doug has mental problems. I'm like, yeah, Great. I Doug, do. I we're going to ask you to talk to HR. Yeah. 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 Maybe a dozen times. And I'm like, fuck you. You know, ah! like, I'll kill you. Um, <laughs> cool. So uh, you all have probably heard about raw dogging. And uh, which is good. You gotta be, you gotta be safe. You know, raw dogging feels good, but it's not always safe. But that's not the raw dogging we're talking about. We're talking about what? raw dogging 
on flights. <laughs> so, but still, <laughs> but more but clarification, still, please. You know, we're more talking about raw dogging. Uh, no, flights. but raw dogging uh, in a plane. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing, step bro? Um. Yeah. So what this is is Justin loves that one. It's essentially it's you get on like a flight. Our podcast. <laughs> See, that's what I'm saying. This lady's like, man, I heard this podcast. These guys are just oh, they're just crazy. all the time. They're like, I'm gonna come, and it's like it hits me. Um, raw dogging on a flight basically means that you get on there, you use no form of entertainment. You can't watch any movies. You can't listen to anything. You basically get the screen that shows the map. No reading. And your thoughts. <clears throat> yeah. That's all you get. And there's this thing, this idea of like, can you do it? And for how long? And the, mo- the longer you do it, the more badass you are to see if you can pull it off. Sorry. We're going to put that in air quotes. Yeah. Quote, unquote, badass. Because there's off- also some different mods that people put on to increase the challenge. But before we talk about the mods to this, Justin, what are your thoughts on raw dogging on a plane by yourself? What if- <laughs> Well, as someone can, who can. just experienced going to the bath, <laughs> that's right. Um, no, when I first heard the term, uh, I my anxiety shot up through the roof and I was like, I can think of nothing less desirable than going on a plane and not having anything to do the entirety of the flight. That sounds miserable, absolutely miserable. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll say the core concept of it, I, I agree with. You know, you and I have talked in the past, <clears throat> and I've heard like there's different people who have uh, talked about in addresses and stuff saying like the reason that creativity is down or, you know, the 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 philosopher is dead now is because we're never bored. And people used to when they great inventors, great thinkers, great, you know, people who, who came up with uh, the, the great things in life, they were bored. They were thinking and it came to them. And now we never have the time to just stop, clear our heads and just think, create, be creative, let our mind wander and see where it goes. So the core concept of this, I really actually like because it almost is like giving yourself, okay, I have this X amount of time where I'm going to force myself just to let my mind go and just wander. Um, That being said, partnering that with pairing that with the fact that you're like trapped in the steel tube and you've got no, like no art. I feel the need. I need some escapism when I'm in a plane because I feel, I feel scrunched. I feel like there's already, you know, so much anxiety leading up to the flight. So I don't think the plane is the right place for me to attempt this because I, I don't think I would do well. What about you? I mean, I can't sleep. Jesus, man. Like, the whole point of it is mm-hmm. like the flight sucks. I know they're like the flight sucks. Can you handle it? Can you handle right. it? Do you do you have the guts to handle it? And I'm like, I just I want time to pass as quickly as possible because I'm not comfortable at all. Right. Right. And I just want to land and I want to move on with my my day. This is a necessary evil for me to get as quickly as possible from point A to point B. Exactly. Why would I make it more difficult? Why would I make it seem like it's going longer? Today, Jill drove us up to Michigan. She goes, man, that wasn't that bad of a drive. I'm like, I know. It felt like five minutes for me because I slept the whole way there. It was awesome <laughs> for me. Didn't take any time at all for me. I'm yeah. like, why would I Why would I want to prolong this misery? It's like, see how tough you are. No, I love the concept of unplugging and mm-hmm. just letting your mind wander. It's one of my favorite things to do. I do it often. But in an idea of like, oh, you're forcing yourself to do it. That's like, hey. Time to be creative. Go. Right. Sometimes right. it's there. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes the inspiration kind of has to hit you on your own. So, you know, maybe it'd be like, I'm going to unplug. But also, cr- scrunched up in a fucking plane, just staring at nothing. Like, that's where you're going to get your time. How about going on yeah. a walk? How about, you know, I don't know, any other plethora of things you can do to find inspiration and be creative and unplug. Oh, you know, sitting that's on the a way chair in your backyard on a yeah. nice summer day. Yeah, get in a fucking hammock and swing sure. around and just think about life and everything like that. Yeah, be on the beach and sleep in a tent and think about, you know, like I did today. And just you did a lot of sleeping wonder. today. I did. I slept a lot. <laughs> it was fucking awesome. I was like, this is what I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, somehow <clears throat> still met my move goal for the day. <laughs> By a lot. <laughs> Makes Man, does it make you wonder. But I did get up at 4.30 this morning to prioritize Accurate. working out. So I did. I did do that. But... 
listen, if this is what makes people feel, you know, empowered. Sure. I mean, go, go for, for it. it. Yeah. I, I have nothing guy, against it. Like, yeah. Th- no, this guy posted that he just achieved his personal best, a 13 and a half hour flight between Shanghai and Dallas without any <clears throat> in-flight entertainment, films, books, or music. Now, he doesn't say he didn't sleep. That's true. He just said Did no he, entertainment. Which, yeah, which mod, is this, is this, a, is, is this an offshoot of? I don't, like, I don't know. Some man. people some people aren't going to the bathroom. Some people yeah. aren't consuming water. They're not, they're literally not getting up and moving, period. Yeah. They're which sitting is also, and staring. By the way, doctors don't recommend that. Yeah. They don't recommend that you uh, you don't eat, drink, or move. Um, yeah, I, that's 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 really dumb. <laughs> I love yeah. this. It's like further down, it's like a, a, a heading that says mental recharge or idiots. <laughs> right. <laughs> For people that are doing this. And self-inflicted torture. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I, There's a lot of things to challenge yourself in. This seems kind of uh, pointless to me meaningless to me um yeah. especially if it's like i don't know if you really want to challenge yourself if you want to test your fortitude aren't there other better ways to do that you know what i mean yeah. like what about for your fortitude of like i'm gonna write you know x amount of pages or x amount of words every single day you know right. or i don't know i just I, there's a there's a thousand other more productive things I think you test yourself with and like, I was on a plane and I didn't fucking look at anything except this map. I raw dogged it, baby. Seven hours. I'm I'm so tough. (laughs) I'm so tough. I was able to do it. I'm like, all right, I guess. Because also, does it say you can't talk to people? Well, that was my thing. I think that's that's supposed to be the case. And I'm like this this uh, foot, this soccer player, this footballer uh, that they have this picture of in the article. Do you mean to tell me that there was no communication between the person taking the photo of them and and them? Like, I, I disagree. Also, if you're with someone, do you just like the minute you sit down in the plane, you just look at them and go, don't fucking talk to me for the next 12 hours. And then you turn forward like a psychopath and stare at the seat in front of you. Yeah. Also, man, that guy's uh, flying nice. He's got nice well, seats. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean... Got, uh... <laughs> He's a professional, so I'm assuming. He's, yeah, I mean, plays nice for Man flight. City, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know, man. Like, just I think life's too short to, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, to sit there and, and intentionally stare off into the void, make and, things tougher for yourself, and, and like I don't know, man. I, you know, I was just the amount of great conversations I've had, you know, like with Jill on long trips or whatever. Oh you know, God, yeah doing that sort of stuff, just talking, whatever. That's, that's totally worth it as a, you know, I don't know, man. I just, this seems, this does not just like planking didn't work for me. Right. This is, or, a, you know, a the cinnamon trend. challenge or all that other shit. I'm just like, <laughs> the yeah. Harlem shake. The heart. That was the one I was like, the Harlem shake. Yeah. They, uh, they don't make sense to me. I don't get them. I'm fucking 41 and I don't fucking get it. Old man. Doug was old man. Doug when he was young man, Doug. Yeah, I don't know, man. I, I guess, hey, congrats if you did this and if you're doing it, I guess to some degree, good for you, whatever, you know, whatever gets you tickled. But I don't know, man. I don't know. It's just, I'm just like, what, what other ways can we torture ourselves? What other things can we come up with? You know, what's something we can come up with right now? That's like, here's the new challenge, you know? Yeah. Well, are you ask, asking me? I'm asking, like, what's something okay. we can come <laughs> up with, you know? Uh, it's called the podcast challenge. Everyone oh, starts God. a podcast. Can you start oh, one? There we go. Can you start you one? Go. It's not easy you to start, start one. one. You start one and you don't fucking promote it. That's right. You don't get on social media. You don't promote it. You don't promote it at all. And you get, if, can you, can you cross the 1000 mark? Can mm-hmm. you cross the 10,000 mark? And here's the thing. You have to podcast and you have to release an episode every single week. <laughs> every single there week. It has to be at least 30 minutes. Are you tough? Are you tough enough? Huh? Are you tough enough to stick through that? Huh? Huh? Or how about this? You have to do, I don't know, you have to raw dog seven hours of content every podcast episode. You know, you just have to like create content for seven hours, you know? Oh, man. Once a week. That sounds Let's go, fucking Erling Holland. Let's why don't you try that? Mr. 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 Yeah. Or Damian Bailey, who did 13, you do 13 and a half hour podcast. You tell me about that, sir. Right. Yeah, you want to like, I'm just staring at something. You got to talk for 13 and a half hours. Fucking go. Hours. That's how you know you're tough. Right? Are you tough enough? That's like, I guess that's like most streamers who are just like, I'm streaming and nobody's Actually, yeah. watching me. 
which is okay. Me. I would say that many people have joined that then, so maybe that's yeah. not such a good one. Yeah, maybe it's not. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's not that creative. I don't know. I don't know. You gotta go. You gotta go three months without masturbating. Let's go. You gotta. You know November? Yeah, times three. <laughs> yeah, baby. That's just the no the no spilled seed challenge. You know, like. <laughs> You say the word raw dog on the tail end of that, people are like, huh? What? <laughs> if you, the, if no, you, the no raw dog, raw dog challenge. If you have nocturnal emissions, you're out, which is just like scientifically going to happen. Because at some point, it's like it's got to go somewhere. You know? False. That means you're weak. You're a weak That means baby. you don't have control of your body. You're Man, who weak. are we, Andrew Tate? <laughs> <laughs> We're turning into the liver king meets Andrew Tate. Right. There are some guys that believe that. Like I heard this wild take, wild take from I can't remember who was friend who was basically was like, you know, you know, I don't I don't masturbate because when I'm in a room, other men could tell if you haven't masturbated. They just know because of like your aura, your alpha aura is out there and they're like they know that you have control. Tell me he wasn't talking like pheromones and stuff. Like is he saying like they can like like He's just saying oh like the God. vibe is like here's the guy who hasn't jerked off, which I would say I think I could spot that guy. And not because like that's an alpha. I'm like that guy is, is on edge because he needs to jerk off. Like <laughs> he needs to rub one out. Stat. Get yeah. this guy a napkin and a, in a in a room in this conference hall and just like let him go to town. No one bothered Dave. He's busy. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Because I'm like that's. Hey man, listen. You got to do it. There's too much. There's too much. I understand. But to be like, hey man, you jerked off. Well, then you're weak. I'm like, no, not necessarily. Kind of, kind of a natural thing to do, and it's totally okay. Yeah. Like, well, I may not. Have I done can that, smell but- your balls from here, and they're empty. You fucking weakling. <laughs> you beta male cuck. And I would look at it and go, "Hey, quick favor, stop sniffing my balls." <laughs> I can smell it from here. Your aura is weak. It's a beta aura. I'm an alpha. I'm like, you're just horny. You're just horny, right. and you need to yeah. take care of that. Yeah, but if you have a raw dog to flight. <laughs> yeah, he's like, oh, raw <laughs> dog. <laughs> Just the mere mention. Dude, the mere right. mention sets him off. Yeah. He's like, raw dog. Ah! <laughs> yeah. So let us know. Have you tried raw dogging ah, on a flight? And would you? We'd love to hear from you in those comments. All right. Another thing I wouldn't. Oh, are we <laughs> jumping? Wait, did yeah, I jump go ahead, let's gun? jump. <clears throat> you no, got it, we... man. Let's go. Fuck it. Let's go. Another thing I wouldn't try, letting a fucking robot do dental surgery on me. Fuck that. <laughs> Absolutely fuck that. This but you just know what? in. Aren't you a, if, how can you be an alpha male if you haven't let a robot do dental surgery on you? <laughs> you fucking beta. This just in as of Monday, August 5th, a uh, robot dentist performs world's first fully automated procedure. <laughs> I like that uh. they call it a robot dentist. Like, does it have its degree? <laughs> I mean, How it's do we know the robot? Work. Does the robot claim itself to be a dentist, or does the robot want to identify with a different line of work? I'm assuming it's learned as much as any other dentist if it's a lot, if it's able to do this. Someone had to program it with the dentistry knowledge. You know what I mean? I just think it's a robot that's been it, a robot that has been programmed by a dentist would be more accurate because is the robot itself a dentist? Here's the thing: what defines a dentist? Does the robot have a soul? Who's the guy that was like? I'll be the first one. <laughs> Me. You know what? You know who it was? It was someone who got tired of raw dog in their flights and needed a new challenge. Like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go to I'm have a robot do my mouth. Like what person was literally like, I'm in. I, I want to be, I want to be the no, first you. one, you know, like Jesus Christ. That's wild. That's a terrifying thing to throw your hat in the ring for. Ugh. So the way this works, apparently it has a robotic arm, obviously, and artificial intelligence. Great. <laughs> And 3D imaging for performing dental work. It's like, I can tell you're a shark. Let me begin cleaning all 200,000 of your teeth. You know, like. <laughs> yeah, please. Yeah. Hopefully they've mapped uh, they've mapped humans correctly in this uh, in this language. Right. model. Uh, so this is from a company called Perceptive. <laughs> and they're aiming to be more accurate and faster in completing procedures, including fillings and crowns. Mm-hmm. So. Hmm. They're having it be more efficient. And also this company has received $30 million in funding and is backed by dentist Edward Zuckerberg, which is the father of Mark Zuckerberg. So we know where that, we 
We know what kind of uh, lineage is investing in this. Fantastic. Awesome. awesome. And what it'll do is like what, it'll t- what the robot will do is it will ask you um, rage baiting questions as it does your teeth to get, you know, more engagement with you. You know, that's right. But what it's doing is it's stealing your uh, dental imprints <laughs> mm-hmm. so that it can fake your death. So that it can also it send your, that to advertisers to right. be used to better advertise for you based on your dental features. It looks like you grind your teeth at night. Here, here's a night guard. It looks like you could use more toothpaste. <laughs> you got some plaque buildup. Here you go. You know. You have gingivitis. You're not flossing, you fucking cuck. You know, like. <laughs> but the firm claims that crown replacements could be completed in just 15 minutes, which is, in my mind, ludicrous. That's. That's wild. That's it says absolutely the, wild. The current method needs two hour, two hour long visits to the dentist. Yeah. Which listen, hey, sounds great, but uh, I mean, well, there's certain there's certain things that do we want to rush this or sh- does it need to take time? I I don't know. I'm not a fucking dentist. <laughs> but you're not a. I'm not a robot. I don't. Know. I'm not a robot. Like, what are we talking about here? Um. Look, I mean, do dentist visits? I mean, as far as cleanings go, cleanings don't take that long, you know? So, and I've never had a crown, you know, fillings I guess I've had before, but, you know, they didn't also didn't take that long either. But I don't know, like, uh, is this something we really need? I mean, I don't know. Is, is this a situation where you could just go into some sort of office that doesn't have, is this coming for dentist jobs, Justin? Well, that's, here's the thing. Is this Is this a tool that dentists can <clears throat> use? To mm-hmm. like the dentist goes in, does an uh, you know uh, a whole assessment of your mouth and like this and this and then pops in specifics about like here's what I want you to do and the robot does it so that the dentist can save time, save more patients, da da da. Or like you said, you walk in and you just have a retinal scan. A door opens. You go into an empty room with just an arm and a mm-hmm. fucking pointy thing. You lay down in the chair and a, the light just dims and then turns <laughs> into like this golden yellow and a mm-hmm. voice just says. Beginning procedure. Just and then says, <laughs> it just starts up. And when it scans your retinas, it also checks your social medias. And it's like, I see you're voting for Trump. What do you think about the woke liberal, you know, assholes? You know, what do you think about them? And it's like, as it, and it will talk to you just like a dentist does while it's trying to do your teeth. So as you try to respond, what? it's like, I did not hear your response. What partisan you that again, dentist are you, you know? going to? <laughs> It talks to you just like a it's dentist just, it, does. <laughs> Doug's dentist is sitting there just going, you know what? Let me tell you something about else about these lip charts, okay? Well, it's going to be, it's it's, it's great because that's, you know, it's basically, you know. Is uh, Alex an echo Jones chamber. your dentist? It could be. He's a dentist for sure, you know. For sure. Yes, for sure. <laughs> me and Dr. Dr. Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I just, I just, you know, I'm obviously making bad jokes about like, you know, since Zuckerberg is involved with this, surely they're oh, going to yeah. have some sort of like bullshit. But the point being like, again, I'm taking the best, most optimistic point of view of this. Like you said, if this is a relatively routine thing and they mm-hmm. can program this thing to do it, they're like, hey, sit in this chair. This robot's going to take care of it. The dentist is going to supervise it, everything like that, and then hit go. And then they can do more customized or more intricate and, you know, surgeries or things like that. They can spend their time doing that versus like, hey, this is routine. This thing's good and it'll get it done. Obviously, if you can get it to a state of like, yo, this is like fucking top notch, super safe and it's incredibly accurate and whatever. All right, cool. Like just like, you know, the driverless cars. I wouldn't fucking get one of those now. Like that's terrifying. But if we get to the point where they're really fucking good. And they can sense everything around them, and they're super fucking reliable. It's a big. I if, consider yeah. it. Sure, 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 sure. But we're not there yet. Like not I'm not getting close. a way go and just like <laughs> hopping in and being like, no way, dude, fuck that. <laughs> and away we go. I'm not. Uh, I'm not interested in trying out the brand new tech that involves my safety. Like that's not. You know. <laughs> no, thank you. No thanks. You know. <laughs> I, I'm not going to be this first guy that volunteers. I'm not even going to be the fortieth guy that volunteers. No. Um. Again taking a more optimistic point of view, like if this goes as planned, this is pretty cool. You know, it's pretty, I mean, imagine if you extrapolate this to say something like, I don't know, getting your car fixed, right? Just doing yeah. a tune up, having some sort of, you know, 3d scan, 3d imaging of your car with some sort of robot. It understands what's going on. It just goes in, changes your oil, 
fixes stuff and things like that. And then that way for the more serious stuff that needs to be addressed, you know, the car mechanics can be like, oh yeah, man, you're going to do a new engine. We're going to do that and whatever, you know, just as an example of, of stuff that could be potentially useful for, yeah. again, not looking to steal people's jobs or work or anything like that. But if this stuff is pretty mundane and pretty straightforward and it's like 99% of the time, it's the same thing, then let's streamline it, you know, make it simple, make it easy. I agree. The the fear, and this could be irrational. I don't know enough about this to to tell it's probably you. Probably not this irrational. Is I'm going to go ahead and tell you now. It's probably not irrational. Whatever but the you're fear about is is just hackers, like in general. Like, sure. What if someone get if this is all connected and this is do it? Like, what if someone gets in there and fucks around with it while the robot's in your mouth? You know, I like if there's some virus that's that's put into whatever system this is all connected with. Like, I just what if we have a cloud strike situation, but with the dental robot? You know. It, this just conjures up that we've I've brought this uh, um, I brought this up before, but that short I can never remember the name of it. Oh but yeah, that Abe, one I think is what's called. Sure, yeah, it's where the robot is operating on the human, trying to find what is a soul or love, trying to find emotion, you know, emotion. Yeah, and love, so yeah. it's basically dissecting a human, and this human is screaming because they're dissecting them alive, and it's like I need to find you have mm-hmm. a broken heart. Let me find where your emotions are, and mm-hmm. like. That just that's and every time I hear something like this, that's all I can think of. I'm like, this is just another robot in doing stuff that it should not be doing inside. And it's worth it's worth thinking about that, because what if someone does, you know, hey, I'm doing a joke, you know, and I'm going to fuck with these things. And then all of a sudden someone's mouth gets cut to shit. You know, right. like it's everyone's this, worst nightmare at the dentist. The drill goes the straight robot. through the back of their their throat, you know? Yeah, like that kind of stuff, you know? Uh, yeah, that's it's terrifying. Worth, like I said, uh, before you said anything, I'm like, whatever you're going to say is probably going to be valid. And I right. was right. It's very we valid. Should, <laughs> things things that we should just consider. The conversation yes. should be had you by people much smarter than us. Abs- 100%. What are the safety mechanisms in place to make sure that this doesn't fuck up your mouth? Right. So, you know, sounds like my prom night. Anyway, let us know. Would you let a robot, you know, clean your teeth, possibly do a filling or a crown? Would you? Would you let it do it for the sake of time? <laughs> you in a hurry? Let us know in those comments. Well, we'd love to know what you're Kate, what you're what you're comfortable with. <laughs> yeah. Um, um yeah, Doug, I want to play a game. All right. Let's do it. Let's transition Let's to something game. more fun. Let's talk about a game. So we played this game before. It's been a minute, um, but we're going to be playing guess the movie in five words or less. The way this works is Justin and I will give each other a rough plot of a movie that has a maximum of five words. <clears throat> and based on those five words, we have to try and guess what that movie is. And we'll do our damnedest to see if we can figure these out. So Justin, are you ready? Douglas, I am ready. All right. Would you like to go first? Sure. Okay. Meaning you're going to. Exactly. I'm like, let me. Yes. Like, sure. Let's. What does that mean? Do you want to guess first <laughs> or do you want to give me a movie movie plot first? When you asked me, how did you mean that? I meant, do you want to give me a movie plot first? Sure. You're like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. Um, Fuck you. All right. So here we go, Doug. The first one on my list. <clears throat> Many sacrifice for one man. Star Trek. <laughs> I didn't have my soundboard pulled up. <laughs> Was it the needs of the many or, <laughs> ah, well, you know, are uh, more than be, this guy. I think is how it goes. The needs of the many <laughs> are better than are, this guy. Are beset uh, with, by the righteous. Ma- Wait, no, I'm mixing movies now. <laughs> so the sacrifice of many for one. Many sacrifice for one man. Matrix. Because he's the one, you know? A lot of people die because of him. You're not wrong. You're I know not I'm wrong. not wrong. I'm Look, fucking this right. Is, this, is, this is open to many movies. Yeah. I, now yeah. that I'm now that you're guessing all these, I'm like, yeah, definitely should have figured out a different line of- Maybe you should have fine-tuned this a bit. Five words on this one, yeah. Right? Shit. Uh, I don't know. What's that movie? Passion of the Christ? <laughs> Except he does suffering for all- on yeah, his shoulders. That's reversed. That's reversed. the inverse of that. <laughs> God damn. I did not consider this was like because here's the thing. I thought of the movie. I'm like, oh yeah, that's this movie. But I'm like, no, you dumbass. This is so many movies. Yeah. 
Uh, let's see. Well, Who else? Uh, you want to just keep guessing these moves? Sacrifice of many for one. All right. Okay. Oh, uh, man. Let's see here. We got Lord of the Rings, you know, because sacrifice many for the one ring, you know? Wait, can I? Here. Let me let me take it. Instead of many, <laughs> I'll say, <laughs> here. I'm retyping it so in my notes get. Oh, thanks. So that I know what it says. Gotcha. Okay. Soldiers sacrifice for one man. Soldiers. Okay, that that is. Does that help? Okay. I mean, it, it def. I mean, I don't know if I'm going to get it. Soldiers sacrifice for one man. One man. Soldiers sacrifice for one man. Uh, Hacksaw Ridge. Not it. I know. <laughs> Soldiers sacrifice for one. Oh, Saving Private Ryan. Obviously, obviously, saving Private Ryan. I should have said soldiers sacrifice to save man. <laughs> oh, no, well, I, I, that worked. That worked. I got there. Yes, I got there. You got I'm, there. I'm, you I'm got fucking there. shocked I got there. I'm not going to lie. I really am too, because I would I was not like, have. I'm just throwing, I had other I guesses felt, to put out there. I, was I like, feel very bad now. No, don't feel bad. <laughs> don't feel bad. Uh, right. Okay, okay. Which one do I do? I have, a lot, I have a lot to work with here. Um, I don't know. I think this one could be easy. I'm just gonna do it. Wolverine and Batman become enemies. <laughs> Wolverine and Batman become enemies. Uh, what? Oh, okay. Because the, the first thing I went to, I'm like, there hasn't been a DC crossover movie with Marvel yet. <laughs> I'm like you're thinking Deadpool, but I, uh, yeah, okay. I have guys. So actors who's played who is who has played? Uh, well, only one person's played Wolverine. So what movie has Jackman been in with either Affleck, Christian Bale? What is it again? Say it again. <laughs> I've uh, gone off the rails now. Wolverine and Batman become enemies. <laughs> Wolverine and Batman become enemies. Wolverine and Batman become enemies. Did Wolverine, did Hugh Jackman become enemies with Adam West at anything? There we go. Has Adam we got, West been at anything? We got Adam West. <laughs> We've got Michael Keaton. We've got yeah. Val Kilmer. We've got right. George Clooney. George Clooney. We've got Christian uh, Bale. We've got Ben Affleck. We've got Robert Pattinson. I forgot Robert Pattinson, but I don't think they were in something together. Um, <laughs> Michael Keaton, they become enemies. Because all I can think of is, uh, what was that movie where uh, Hugh Jackman's daughter got kidnapped? Oh, that's was, Prisoners. Uh, was it Prisoners? Like, that's the mm-hmm. only movie that's coming up for, because I'm like, he that's he was angry in that movie. Um, yeah. He broke a sink with a hammer. That's um, right. But that was the Riddler. That was Paul Dano that he was mad at. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Becomes enemies with Batman. Fuck, this is really no one else has played Wolverine, right? <laughs> like, wait a second. Is, I think am I forgetting I think, something? If you can figure out which Batman I'm referring to, yeah. It's it's gonna I think you're good. fall into place. Yeah. So I don't think okay, I'm just gonna go through. I don't think I don't remember Hugh Jackman ever being in anything with Pattinson. I don't remember him ever being in anything with Bale. So I'm gonna I'm gonna immediately knock those two out. Am I Am I off track already? Yes. Fuck. <laughs> what was the end with one of those two? Oh, no. <laughs> ah! Was he in something with Christian Bale? Oh, man. Why am I blanking on this? I'll give you a hint. It was Christian Bale. And oh shit, yeah, um, fuck, uh, it was the prestige, yes, yes, oh god, yes. damn it, ah, oh, I for man, I haven't thought about that movie in so long, I completely forgot about that movie. The prestige is my Roman Empire, I think about it a lot, Do you- <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, nicely, nicely done, yeah, it's one of my favorite movies. Oh so. man. Yeah, that, that's that why I was like, that's a, that's I don't know, a, that's a, fun, 
That's a fun way of describing it. Like, no, it, it, it <laughs> really is, dude. I feel like mine are shit now. That was fantastic. That was a fantastic way to go. Thank you. Fuck. It's a weird way to get get to it. You're like, if I can figure out who these are, I'm like, I think yeah. I can find my way there. Oh, God damn it. I love the fact that that's your Roman Empire, too. What about that movie? Let me ask you. What about that movie makes you come back to it so often? It's so, first of all, Christopher Nolan, fucking genius. Mm-hmm. Um, the way the movie is laid out is exactly like a magic trick. Like how they explain like the different parts of the magic trick, the way that the movie unfolds in the three acts is yeah. like a magic trick as well. Like <clears> there's a bunch of different layers to it and it keeps you guessing. And I don't know, man, like it's just, it's so, it's such a unique story. I think it's yeah. very, very fun, very interesting and dark, but also very fucking cool. I love and it. ends in traditional, you know, uh, fucking uh, Christopher Nolan fashion where it just, it ends and you're like, oh fuck. <laughs> it cuts to black yeah. and you're like, oh my God, it's so cool. Yeah. All right. All right. <clears throat> Let's go. Here we go. All right. <clears throat> <sighs> Construction worker obsessed with apples. Uh, men, men at Work, starring Charlie Sheen <clears throat> and Emilio Estevez. <laughs> Relatively certain they were garbage men on that one, were they not? Yeah. I don't know. It's true. <laughs> I'm an asshole. Apparently, I'm, com- I'm confirming. Mannequin. Mannequin 2. <laughs> There's some construction workers in there, aren't there? Sure. Probably. They can't call. <laughs> they can't call. You know? Hey, lady. What's up yeah. over there? Construction this, workers. Here's the thing. This apples. one. This one. Uh, there, there's, there's, there's. Snow one. White. <laughs> you got it. Absolutely. Technically, it's the Huntsman, but yes. <laughs> oh, there, damn it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um. No, there's one word in here that uh, we'll 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 see if you can get it. But there's there's one word that could make it easier. So if you get stuck, I'm gonna switch one word and see if it makes it easier for you. Construction worker obsessed with, with apples. apples. The apples part's throwing me off because I'm like, I don't fucking know. Like, I thought you know. the apples part was gonna be the one where you're like, oh, got it. Oh, I was like, I don't know. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's like Forrest Gump. No, he's obsessed with. That's sh- no, Bubba. He's obsessed with shrimp. Um, I'm also gonna say I'm not super. After yours, I'm not super happy with my, <laughs> with, with my, my five words. There are certain times when you and I play games where uh, one of us will nail it and the other one like does a so-so yeah. job. This one, you, I have already done a so-so job. This is it's you, all good. You have your work cut out for you, and uh, it's all good. Next time, I will be better. You're fine, bud. You're good. <laughs> Construction worker obsessed with apples. Um, yeah, I'm kind of at a loss here. Give me, give me the the switcheroo. Let me see Janitor obsessed with apples. Janitor. Whoa, whoa. There's a big difference between construction worker and janitor. Yeah, some people have multiple jobs. <laughs> janitor obsessed with apples. Man. This is, again, this is a stretch. I was trying to be clever. I pulled a Volucci. I was trying to be oh, okay. clever with this one. Okay. I don't know, man. Give it to me. I give it's up. It's goodwill hunting. Oh, Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You know what? He is also a construction that's, worker. That's is. Uh, that's true. that. Yeah. It's true. Don't don't be so hard on yourself. Nope. Nope. I'm very I'm very upset. I'm I'm asking for the comment section to drag me on this one. <laughs> I'm asking for it. Bring it on. All right. Okay. I got a I got a tough decision here on which ones I want to do. I think I'm gonna do this one. FBI agent stops hippie thief. FBI agent stops hippie thief. Uh, catch me if you can. Nope. Fuck. I uh, haven't seen that movie. Couldn't tell you. No, wait, I have. What am I talking about? I was thinking of a different one. Never mind. Yeah, I've seen that. FBI agent stops hippie thief. FBI agent stops hippie thief. Spoiler alert for this movie. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, got it. The hippie thief, because, I mean, there's so many FBI agents. I feel like the hippie thief is the thing that, like, that is, that you're is supposed the to key. zero in. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> FBI agent stops hippie thief. Hippie, hippie thief. Oh, man. It's fun to try and boil these things down. Yeah. Also, what's fun is I was going through my list of movies, and you can see the more recent movies uh-huh. and how they like really distill what the movie's about. And you go to like some other ones, and they're like, 
<laughs> like I was looking at a league of their own and it was just this long winded thing where like they mentioned John Lovitz, who's barely in that movie. It's like scene stealer. <laughs> John Lovitz plays this guy who was able to, do- I'm like, good God guys, relax. Right. What are you doing? This is you guys didn't even have SEO back then. Like relax. They anyway. gotta get. They gotta get the. Uh, yeah. Well, John Lovitz was probably on SNL, and they thought, "Oh, yeah. he'll be a draw if we put it in." Yeah. The, yeah. Exactly. Um, FBI agent okay. stops hippie thief. Stops hippie thief. Fuck is a hippie thief. Oh man. Nice guys. No. With Russell Crowe. No. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't think there was a hippie thief in that one. That was a long shot. Um. Your, your hint is this movie came out in 1991. 91? Mm-hmm. Better fucking believe it. <laughs> I would say, I'm like, Silence of the Lambs? <laughs> is he a hippie? He still has a face, but I don't think he's a hippie. Um, You've quoted this movie to me several times. God damn it. Oh, I'm just failing today. Um, You're not failing. You're tired. It's fine. No, it's not. There's no excuses, Doug. No excuses. I'm a it's beta. Di- um, it's directed by <laughs> Catherine Bigelow. I'm playing. This Which is, is one surprising. Of those times, when you see that, you're like, oh, that's right. She directed this. It's kind of This wild. is one of those times where like my mind is just like, it, it, it's racing and it's blank. All right. Like, I'll give yeah. you another big one. You ready? Please. Yes. Gary Busey's in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck, man? <laughs> can't, why, can't, why can't I think of it? Yeah, oh my god, you're giving me everything except the name of the fucking movie. <laughs> uh. All right, I'm going to give you what you quoted me. You ready? Yes. Utah, give me two. Fuck, point break. <laughs> <laughs> it is point break. Correct. God damn it. God, ever loving damn it. <laughs> Man, I don't know what is wrong with my brain today. Holy You're fine. shit. You're fine. This is, this is fun. We only have five words to work with. It's tough. I thought right? you were going to say, we only have five more to go each. <laughs> we got <laughs> like, no, 10 please. total, baby. No, please. Uh, all, right. all right, cool. Last one here. Give me one. I'm, I'm hoping this is my best one. I think yeah, okay. I think this one was good. All in, and I don't know if you've seen this, which is the problem. I think you <laughs> okay. have. I think bring you it have. on. Yeah, bring it on. All in against the Russian. Oh, uh, this is Rounders. Yes, it is. Thus You're like, that one was for me, Doug. That <laughs> one was for me. That thus concludes my Matt Damon trilogy for you. There we go. We got it. Ta da! You did it. You did it. God right. damn. I have three good ones here. Um. All right, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to do this Please, one. Please, let's do Illegal it. Illegal alien is a hero. <laughs> the terminal. Nope. <laughs> okay. Uh, illegal alien is a hero. Um, E.T. Nope. Okay. Um, illegal alien is a hero. Illegal alien. So I'm. One of these words to... is on point. Another word is a bit of a mislead. <laughs> but it's also true. <laughs> See, I, I want to say. <clears throat> okay. So I'm going to break it down. I want to say that the illegal alien part is to lead me to believe that uh, it's uh, like an immigrant. But I feel like it is an alien who has landed here without like permission from like the intergalactic whatever the fuck. I like I like where you okay. headed with this. So an illegal alien, is it Men in Black? It's not Men in Black. Okay, because yeah, the alien was not the hero in that one. Nope. But Tony Shalhoub did steal the show. He did um, steal the show. Illegal alien. Illegal alien. Vincent D'Onofrio did yes. great. He did an amazing job in that. Yeah. Um, sugar. sugar. Water. More. Water. <laughs> Water. Um, okay. 
So what other what other movies has an alien come down and uh, and helped? Hmm. Is it John Carter? It is no. See, he's on Mars, but he is, I guess, a legal alien. So that's a way to that's look a, at it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, that's um, true. I didn't say on Earth. You know. Yep. Wasn't specified. Uh, I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna have to ask you for a hint. All right, this movie came out in 2013. 2013. Uh, you and I watched the teaser together at assignment desk. Was it District Nine? It's not District Nine. Fuck. We watched and you the said, teaser. You said something very funny after we watched the teaser that still sticks with me to this day. I'm quote movies I can't even remember. I'm saying yeah, punchlines I don't know yeah. about. I was like, it's one of those things where I'm like, I will always remember. Whenever I think of this movie, I'll think of Shit, you. 2013. <laughs> Fuck and hey. Uh, was it Cowboys and Aliens? It was not Cowboys okay. and Aliens. I'm just gonna throw your, your name I don't know is when shit. that came out. Yeah. It's all right. It's all right. These are good guesses. I'm pulling the soldier sacrifice. I'm just doing the same thing you did. I'm just throwing yeah. it at the wall. Yeah, um, you gotta do it, man. You're getting guesses. That's good. <laughs> Oh my god. Uh fucking uh you watched the trailer for it. Fuck, what else came out in twenty thirteen? Give me another clue. I don't know. I'm I'm having Right, This one's a big one. Directed by Zack Snyder. Oh, wait, Man of Steel? Mm Mm-hmm. All right, there you go. I (laughs) I didn't I thought, man, time is just like a fucking I didn't realize it came out in thirteen. Fuck. What what was what did I say? We'll talk about it off mic. All right, great. (laughs) I don't know if it'll play well. Per- I don't know if it'll play Perfect. Well. That sounds like it's just, me. It's just uh, well, my best stuff yeah. is off mic. Yeah, we'll talk about yeah. it. You know, I'll, I'll let you decide later if you want to share with the world. <laughs> Probably it's something not. That I hold dear in my heart. Justin, great job. We did it. Let us know if you got those. We'd love to hear oh, more about it. Man, tell us what you think. This is tough. This is tough to write. <laughs> it's tough Christ. to guess because you want to give them enough to maybe make it a challenge, but also you only have five fucking words to work with. It's tough. It's tough, tough, tough. Yep, it is. It is, it is, it is. Also, <sighs> here's the thing. I'll say this. We played this initially like two or three weeks in a row. Mm-hmm. And I will say that the same thing with the sound effect one. The more you play it in a row. We haven't played this one in a while. It, mm-hmm. Your brain starts to shift into that like yes. realm of thinking. So uh, I'm going to give myself an excuse. <laughs> no, that's fine. That's cool, man. I'm yeah. just always happy to play this shit with you. Justin, what do you got recommending Justin. this week? You know what, guys? <clears throat> This is the last week I'm going to recommend it, but I'm going to recommend it again. If you haven't fucking seen Wolverine, Deadpool and Wolverine, go fucking see it. Because if not, we're going to start spoiling it for you. I, uh, I, I'm i going to go see it with Jill asked to go see it. So yes! Natalie starts school on Friday. Yes! And while she's at school, we're going to go see it. So nice. I'm excited. But I also realized nice, she hasn't nice, seen nice. Deadpool too, so we have homework to do this week. So Yes, you do. You 100% uh, do. Uh, yeah, do I do that. Like it. And I might, you know what? I might go to Taco Tuesday tomorrow. I might go see it uh, for $6. So there we'll see. Go. Yeah. yeah, Jill. Jill was already starting to see some spoilers, so she's it, like, "It's oh. hard." Like, like within two weeks of it being out, I know, like Reynolds and Jack. Reynolds all, just post. She had to st- had to unfollow him because yeah, she was seeing. Because it was one of those him, where so. I was like, "Yeah," like, but someone said they're like, "Dude, it's two weeks." The fact that nothing got spoiled up until it yeah. came out, and two weeks after that is a Herculean effort. Like people yeah. online were like, because everyone was like. Oh, thanks. I didn't think that the the you know stars of the movie would spoil it for me. And everyone's like, yeah. look, it's two weeks out. This is a huge yeah. movie. The fact that it took two weeks after the release, go fuck yeah. yourself. Yeah. It's you it's you just big. have to go see it. Yeah. Tough titties. So um, Deadpool and Wolverine, I'm just saying, go see it. What do you got? Go see it, you donkeys. Um, you donkeys. I, I saw the boys season four. I liked it. I think it was worth it. Yeah. I know Intense. some people were like, some people thought, hey, the it's not subtle. Like it used to be, you know, as far as like, you know, it's it's implications and it's like political sort of whatever. Oh, like, it is very, very blatantly. Yeah. Like, but you, know, you what? know who it's. Yeah. Here, here's the thing. Also, at the state of th- what's going on in the story, there's only going to be a, a one more season. Yep. Shit's going to get more blunt. Just, just kind of like real life. <laughs> right. People well, aren't that's... really being subtle anymore. So, right. you know. <laughs> you, were, you were slowly kind of building up. Things were being revealed to you the same as they were in the world where Huey was getting brought into. And now mm-hmm. it's a fair point. Like things, you know, Homelander is no longer hiding what his motives are. So mm-hmm. the show is going to get more blunt quite literally and figuratively. So I, that's yeah. a good point. That's a really yeah. good point. So, you know, but I enjoyed it. I tore through it real quick and I was like, yeah. I enjoyed it. I think it's worth it. I'm excited to see how they uh, conclude things. So hoorah. Hoorah, gang! Thank you all for listening and watching. Please be sure to follow us 
on all our social medias at Mind Gap Podcast. Check out our YouTube, youtube.com slash Mind Gap Podcast. Hit the like button, subscribe for us. It's free. Uh, check the link in the description for links to our Discord, for links <clears> to <throat> our Patreon, links to our uh, merch at redbubble.com, and share us around. We'd appreciate it. Be sure to follow Justin online as well. On Instagram, at Justin underscore Michael, spelled M-I-K-E-L. It's the fun way of spelling it. And while you're in the online realm, anywhere where you can find and consume audio versions of podcasts, guess what? You'll find us there too. So subscribe, rate, review, like, share, whatever the fuck you can do on there. We appreciate it. Big one is sharing. Let people know we exist. And then TuiStaith.com, TuiStaith on all social media, and LoveAndImprovFilm.com, Love and Improv Film on Instagram. Yeah, Justin. Yeah. Thank you. Douglas, thank you. Listeners, viewers, thank you. You all, I demand, have a dandy fucking week. Mind Gap Podcast.